What's up, y'all? Welcome to the Songbringer Daily Game Dev live stream. Huzzah! Today we're working on, uh, this is day 404, by the way. This is Air 404 day. Pretty exciting. Um, <clears throat> I played the game with a friend yesterday and finally played two player. Got to play as Jib. And it gave me so many ideas. I'm like, oh my god, Jib could be so much more fun with just a little few tweaks. Like, for example, it'd be so cool if Jib could pick up items. Some items. Like, for example, diamonds. <clears throat> so, that's what I'm doing. Happy today, everybody. Okay, so we'll start with the first thing I want to do is make a little icon that happens when you when you pick up an item. So it kind of shows you what has been picked up. Just a little visual reinforcement. Arcane, what's up? I hope somebody would like that. It's day 404, gotta honor that, right? So if Jim could pick up some diamonds, that would be really cool. As player two, it'd be so much fun. You know, probably he's not gonna probably go after them on purpose, but if he comes across a diamond, he can pick it up. Same thing with keys. I want him to be able to pick up keys too. So he can kind of be responsible for some items. <clears throat> yeah, salad dogs. Um, I'm so glad this. What? Uh, Have the day 404. The perfect opportunity for something like this, huh? Okay, so first thing is to make a little um, icon that appears when you pick up an item. Oh, I should probably check in what I have done so far, which was I started I started working on the placement of the tower. Okay, so that's started. Man, it is freaking hot in here. I'm gonna go get a fan real quick. Hopefully that helps. All right, cool. So we've got a clean working base here. Get rid of some of these breakpoints and stuff. Um, next. Okay, so when a, when you pick up an item, there be a slight animation. Taking the item sprite frame and just sort of like bouncing it above the head. So I'm imagining like a, when you pick up a diamond, a diamond bounces above your head really quick just to show you that a smaller diamond, like a mini diamond, like that should help. Um, so we're probably gonna need, so pick up item.
What's up, Enko? Yep, gotta take a break sometimes, right? Well, it's a break from live streaming. It's not a break from developing this game. <clears throat> some days... Some days I just can't get a live stream or even a video done. Okay, that gets rid of the item status. Life. Diamond, 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 diamond. Animate pickup. So animate pickup is going to be the going to be the function. Okay, so I'm going to write this code here inside this function at first, and then I'll move it where it should be in the enims later. So this is a uh, sort of a particle animation. And we got the item ID. Capture the item type as well. So now we can grab the sprite frame. Give in the item type. This is called Sprite Frame Cache. Yeah. So if we found the Sprite Frame, Then we'll create a frame or a sprite for it. And we'll put it right above the player's head. Nice. Nice. Thanks for coding that. So the position will be the player's position or whatever entity this is. Let's make that a vec2. 
fuzz.y plus equals f dot dialog what the heck is the dialogs height thing it's just float height all right pause that y plus equals f dot dialog dot height why didn't that work oh we might not have dialog component here let's get that dialog component Okay, so throw it at that position, give it the anchor point, <clears throat> 0 0.50, 0, and our parent is just going to be game scene layer, and the Z is going to be same Z as the player is at that point, so f.render sprite, actually let's get the Z like this. Okay, so now we can make it a little smaller. I'm thinking this should be about, I don't know, but let's try half as, half as big at first. And then running an action. So I'm imagining this is like a, it like goes bling, and just bounces and fades out and probably into so this is going to be a couple sequences here. So move by int create so I'm thinking, wow, this is going to be pretty fast. Boom, boom. Half a second, maybe, total. Let's give it a const float duration just to, so this is easier to change later. So let's say it's a half second long. The move by in on the way up. Both of these should be eased. Yeah, and I guess it's probably just duration times a half. So delta position is going to be like it bounces in the air, maybe 8 pixels. And let's ease that. Sign in. Yeah, in on the way, up. And then out on the way, down. Exactly opposite. So one more sequence. This time, it's a fade to. Oh, and this should start, start at zero. So fading into 255. And fading out. Back to zero. And then removing yourself. Remove self. Oops. Okay. Let's see if that works. So uh, what we should see is when you pick up an item, like a diamond, the diamond should just bounce above your head. Simple little particle animation to show you visually that you just pick something up.
a little bit, a little bit more intuitive. And also will come in really handy with this next thing that I'm going to do here where Jib can pick up diamonds. So when Jib picks up a diamond, you'll clearly see, oh, Jib picked that up. Oh, this is a horrible area to try and pick up stuff. Oh yeah, there it was! <laughs> okay, scaling it's not right. And in a different area would really help. Okay, so the fade. I'm thinking these fades should be about a quarter. What the? What's up, Zeltron? Congrats, Arcane! It doesn't seem like it's jumping, really. Yet. It's your first time, really? What? So now I'm going to make this a proper animation in a nims.h. So you got your Eid parent, your float, duration, anything else? Oh, the item type you're picking up. Yeah, that should be it. All right, well, that's compiling. I'll start implementing the method. Get rid of all these Coco 2 d prefixes in this file. I right, use some more. All right, I'm gonna try bouncing. Coco Sudi has a, has a nice action called a bounce action. I, mean, I think it's going to look better than, the, than what I did here with this move by. I'll let it finish compiling first. Computer's kind of slow right now. Oh man, that fan really helped. It's been hot here in California. Oh right, so duration, don't need that. Oh, we need to grab the entity. And
Okay, so let's try that jump by. <clears throat> duration is just duration. Position. I think the position is just zero. I'm not moving it at all. Just Load height, so height is eight. One jump. Hopefully that looks a little more jumpy, less smoothly falling. I think it needs a slightly faster duration. Let's try point four. Um, I get this feeling that the the sprite should be a little scaled down, but maybe not all the way. So maybe it's just point eight. Maybe you should jump a tiny bit higher. No, maybe not with that. Just kind of play with the numbers now, make it look right, tweak it here and there so it feels just right. It's not putting it at the center of the sprite. I'm like, why is it off so much? Pause.x plus equals e dot render dot sprite dot get sprite frame get texture rect dot width. That size, that width. And I'm thinking that this should be minus four. Oh, 
cool. Yeah! This is working good. Wait, that was weird. I was standing right there, and it still put it like... I think it must be content size that way. Yeah, it's gotta be content size. And then probably a little less here. Negative eight. And this bit will make content size. Render.sprite.get content size that width. Right? Yeah, I think that's yeah, content size. Whoa, no way. That's not it. Oh, it might just be this guy's content size. Oops, this is X. Man, I don't think it needs this at all. That adjustment. What's the deal with the giant floating orbs? Ah, uh, the answer is a spoiler. Yeah. To tell you the truth, I haven't actually decided what they should be yet, but there will be a secret. So, in that sense, it's kind of, it's gonna be some kind of secret thing. Might even require some special item that hasn't even been created yet, I'm not sure. Or maybe they all link up to be some other kind of meta secret, I'm not exactly sure what will happen, but there will be some kind of secret. Uh, related to these guys, these floating orbs. How's it going today, Sound Dog? What you working on today, man? I did. You got the texture. Textures rendering and stuff? 
Yeah, definitely. There will. There's always been a plan for that. Depending on whether I should make this an effect that stays with the player, or... Or whether it should stay the way it is now, where it kind of like... Doesn't go with the player. I think I'll leave it as it is for now. Okay, cool. Oh, I should try this out with other, other stuff. Other items, buying things. Crafting things. Texture rendering up and running. Asset management. Uh-huh. Yeah. Nice. Right on. It's coming along, man. running that animation when you pick up those that you just can't see it. I guess that means pretty much every item you pick up unless it's I should check keys. Keys aren't working. Okay, what's up with the keys? It's probably just not calling 
animate pickup. Ending life diamond bomb container. Forgot to have the color. All right, we'll get that in there. Right, so his key or his switch gets color plant, otherwise it returns the color of the item. Checking it in. Alright, so the next part of this is to make it so Jib can pick up keys 
and diamonds. This is going to be so much cooler as player two to have a few more responsibilities. And they're not necessarily responsibilities. The player can still pick up diamonds as well. It's just that Jib can also pick up diamonds. That would be pretty neat to see that happen. You won't ever be able to pick up courage. But a lot of the times when you're playing as player two, you're scanning things. And then you're like, okay, player, I just scanned this. I found this. Come pick it up. So it'd be really, really fun to have Jib be able to pick up diamonds. So I think this is going to be fun. Uh, so where does it call pick up item from collision system? No, oh, so that that can't have been it. Oh, okay. I think I know what's up. So Jib doesn't even have right rock has move mask. No. Doesn't have move mask item. Mm. Oh, here it is. Collision mask item. Okay, so Jib needs that. Yes, Jib can pick up items. This is going to crash here at first, but I just want to see it do that crash so I know it's calling the code. <laughs> There he goes. Okay, he waited long enough to pick up that one. Good. So it's calling Jib to pick stuff up. Okay, so now we see some special logic in the pick up item thing, which translates. Jim can pick up some items. So no matter what, we're going to return from this method. Um, and now it has to be one of the right items. So I want it to be is diamond. I think I want to make a method for that.
Let's call it constants. Is diamond. There is diamonds. Oh, congrats to Clone Geek, but sorry, it's only six points. Oh my god. That's that was the worst I've ever seen. Six points. Jackpot. Totally right. So if it's diamonds or what else can you pick up? Keys. Either one of those, Jib can pick it up. I think we're going to need to work on the initiator, initiator ID. Pick up item. Item ID. Initiator. Yeah. The initiator ID. For... Here, this pickup animation. Pickup animation has to be run by the initiator. So that way, Rock can actually obtain the item. So for example, when you pick up diamonds, it technically goes into Rock's equipment. But um, Jib will be the one that shows that he picked it up for the animation. So we're going to call gear systems pickup item again. Same area. Same entity. Wait, no, different entity. Just hero zero. Game scene. Hero zero. All right, time to check this out. See if this works. If it does, we'll see. 
Our diamonds increase. We need less diamonds. Okay, Jib, try and pick that up. Good. Now pick up the key. Yeah, you got the key! Good job, Jib. Do we have the key? We have the key! Oops. Jib, I'm so proud of you. Pick up keys. All right. Jib can pick up diamonds and keys. All right, one more thing that was kind of uh, a thing when I played as Jib yesterday was his speed. Get the right controller here. That's right, I forgot. If I put one controller in, it's going to try and control the main player. If I put two controllers in, there's a crazy bug. So I'm just going to use the keyboard. Yeah, so I want Jib to move a little, I want him to accelerate a little bit faster if he's human. I think he has a, already has an automatic acceleration and stuff like that when he's AI. Okay, so his acceleration is 0.5. 
and rocks acceleration 0.33. I do believe that jib will not be affected whatsoever by his acceleration. Wait, maybe he is. He sets his velocity always. Speed comes from his uh, like min speed and stuff. He's got the velocity, he sets an immediate D cell factor. We'll go into the move system and check how this applies. Oh yeah! So right, if it's using the player's acceleration, it uses a simple acceleration factor based on your acceleration, but otherwise if it already has velocity it's only using the decel factor. So that will work. Awesome. If I said his if I said jibs acceleration to say zero and keep him as an AI he should still run around exactly the same speed yeah he's got a nice like cruising velocity he's not any faster make sure he scans about the same yeah he's totally the same cruising jib Okay, so now if I take over, play human jib. That's nice having no acceleration factor. But maybe it should be a little bit tiniest fraction of a second there, tenth. Yeah, that's better. Because as Jib, you're like, you kind of need to be able to juke and move pretty fast. And I just, I think this will feel a lot better as player two to be a faster Jib. All right, that was easy. The easiest change of the day, gang. Yes, right. <laughs> Wins one point. That's gonna be hilarious. I can't wait either. We'll take a screenshot. Be like, look, this happened. All right, Jib accelerates faster as a human. All right, that's, man, that's the mo the three biggest ideas I had for Jib, I think. I'm trying to remember what else I had in, in mind to make it more fun. Three things off the list already. Jib faster excel, done. Oh yeah, animations and stuff for what can be scanned. It's like, as Jib, you forget, you don't really notice, if there's a lot, of, especially if there's a lot of enemies on the screen, you don't really notice where are the places that you haven't scanned yet. Because dead bodies just like look like dead bodies, and you don't know what's what you scanned already, what you haven't. So there needs to be some kind of glow, or something, where you can scan stuff. Oh yeah, Jib can scan longer. Oh yeah, Jib gets locked behind locking doors. That was important. Here we go. Did that. Particles. Jib can collect diamonds. Did that. Jib can collect keys. 
It would be nice if Jib could open doors too. But not unlock doors. All right, so when Jib scans, Trying to remember what it is about Jib when he scans stuff that makes it have a delay. Hmm, making this so he can keep scanning and scanning forever is going to be kind of tricky. I could maybe make the, the input though, instead of releasing a button, check if this, the button is down. Yeah, that's cool. You can just hold it down now. Okay, that's good enough. Okay, that's cool. Jib can scan repeatedly by holding button.
All right, I think the next most important thing is Jib getting locked inside doors. Have I beaten the Verloc already? Let's see. Oh wait, this locking puzzle room would be a lot easier to deal with. Uh-oh. Crash. Restarting. Jim's human mode right now. Yeah, he totally gets stuck behind there if you're lazy and you're human. Oh, sorry, Jim, you're stuck. What's up, Pete and Wally? I'm working on making Jib more fun to play as, uh, as player two. So already today I made it so Jib can pick up diamonds, Jib can pick up keys, so that's pretty interesting. He can't pick up health, he can't pick up cactuses, he can't pick up bombs, but other than that, he can. He, now he has a few things he can pick up, so it's a lot more fun to play as him. You have some more things you can do, you know, and it makes it kind of more useful because He's already scanning items, right? He's already at the he's already at a foe's dead body. You know, if he scans something that he can pick up, it'd be really cool if he could pick things up. It makes things more efficient for both both the player and Jib. So that's cool. And so I'm just basically working on making Jib more fun to play as if you're human. So or if you're you know you're playing two player. So yeah, right now I'm making it. I'm fixing a bug where he gets stuck in the. He gets stuck behind a door that locks. If you're human, you could be lazy and kind of like, you know, not be pressing the button right when the door is locking, and then you accidentally get stuck behind the door. It happened to me twice playing. I was like, oh my god, I'm stuck behind the door again. And then my partner, who was playing as as the human, he was like, oh dude. I can't. You know, at that point, you, there's no way for him to get health in the room because. You know, Jib stuck. So that's a, this is a pretty important bug to fix. Um, there's something where it it moves the player into within the margin. But I think I'm gonna go handle this from the phase walk phase slide. So we need to capture Jib's ID. All right, so I'm going to try it just with the dire the east direction first to see if this is working. did it.
in the room though. That was really funny. It's kind of worrying, worrisome funny actually. Okay, I got a better idea than setting. It should be like if exit dir is k dir west or exit dir equals k dir east, then new hero pause jibadi is new hero pause fluxid. Oh, whoops. Dot x. So west and east, jib's x position syncs up with the hero's x position. Now, this is going to be y. Should make him sneak right under the door. Hopefully. funny. I don't know why he moves so much. <laughs> so maybe we'll move him. Come over here, Jib. If he's closer to the door, when I make this transition... Oh yeah, he does move right in. Okay, so it has something to do with how far Jib away Jib is away from everything. Maybe he should just cancel his Maybe he should cancel his velocity. He is slingshotting. He slingshots into the room. It might be cool, actually, to keep it like this. Hey, it worked! Nice, it's just, his velocity just had to be cancelled. Okay, let's see that with uh, AI control jib. Make sure that doesn't mess up the AI in any way, in any way at all. Yeah, that did look smooth. Okay, cool. It works. It totally works with the AI. Of course, because the AI is really close the whole time. Okay, I'll see that. I'm gonna see that one more time. Putting the putting jib like way away in a corner. Oh. I was like, why isn't he moving? Because he had the AI on. There we go. Thank <laughs> you. 
goes in the other kind of doors. Hold our Jib. Come on, Jib. Hold the door! Okay, we're gonna try and always sync Jim's pause with player. Yeah. Not just if the room is locked. Okay, works nicely, of course, when it's locked. Position. 
Ah. It might have something to do with this. Oh well, I think it's a little better than it was. We improved it so he doesn't get locked in. I'm gonna try it one more time though, just to make sure. Triple check it. It's gotta be some other door I haven't tried to open, or there could be a bug maybe. We'll go this way. Lay traps. That's an interesting idea. I never thought about him laying traps. That's cool. I'm gonna ponder that. Because I was thinking about him having some kind of little weapon. Besides his shield weapon, which can be crafted and become a pretty powerful weapon. Um, yeah, it would be nice to have some other kind of weapon like. And laying a trap could be really unique uh, because it would be different than any other type of weapon so far. And I was planning on having mines anyway, so maybe he could have mines. Like little mini bombs. Maybe they could be little stun stun mines. I don't know. That's cool because it really adds a different element to things. Right, yeah, he really he really can act as a pretty good shield for Rock right now because he um he can distract enemies and that's kind of the best defense is like distracting an enemy and then the enemy's not going for the hero. So that's kind of one of his one of the strategies you can play if if you're playing as Jib, you can really be a good protector of the of Rock because you just distract the enemies. <laughs> That's it for today's stream. I got a bunch of little things tweaked here, so Jib's a lot more fun to play as. It's a good suggestion, Pete and Wally. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna keep on uh, working on this tonight and stuff, but it's dinner time for me here, so I'm gonna take a little break, get some dinner, but I'm happy with the results of this today's stream. Yeah, thanks to Clone Geek. Thanks everybody for watching. Cheers. Have a great night. Enjoy yourselves.